Secretary of State John Kerry has said that Russia must urge Ukraine separatists to disarm in hours. The request came as Kerry spoke to delegates in Paris again, reiterating the threat of sanctions if Moscow did not encourage the separatists to be part of a legitimate process. Russia and Ukraine have been in a tense standoff since March when Russia annexed the previously Ukrainian peninsula of Crimea and massed troops along other parts of its border with Ukraine. Syrian warplanes have struck several Iraqi towns in a cross-border attack. Syria and Iraq have been facing an onslaught of Islamic terrorists at the two countries' borders. At least 57 Iraqi civilians were killed and more than 120 others were wounded. The border cities are among those under control of the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, or ISIS, which seeks to create an Islamic State that contains portions of Iraq in Syria. As Islamic militants take over an Iraqi gas field town an hour from Baghdad, the Iraqi president has called a parliament session. The town has four natural gas fields where foreign companies are in operation. The president is aiming to form a new government that will undermine the insurgents with international backing. President Obama has ruled out sending ground troops back to Iraq, where they withdrew in 2011. He has offered up to 300 American military advisors, about 130 of whom have now been deployed. The U.S. has claimed that a Pakistani charity is a front for banned militants. This statement means that it can freeze any assets the charity has under U.S. jurisdiction. Jamart ud darwar calls itself a humanitarian charity but is widely seen as a front organization for the Lashar-e-Taiba. The Pakistan-based group has been accused of planning and executing attacks in India, including the 2008 Mumbai attack that killed 166 people. The Thai military governing the country since the ousting of former Prime Minister Yingluck Chinawat is cracking down on any new reports that are critical of what is going on in Thailand. The junta have set up a panel to closely monitor domestic and international media that is criticizing the coup and chaos within. The National Council of Peace and Order said the military would monitor reports that were false or posed a threat to national security, and those who did not cooperate could face charges. Australia is now claiming that the missing Malaysian airliner that went down in the Indian Ocean in March was on autopilot when it crashed. The jet carrying 239 passengers and crew disappeared on March 8 shortly after taking off from Kuala Lumpur bound for Beijing. No wreckage of evidence from the crash has been found. Two vessels, one Chinese and one from Dutch engineering company Fugro, are currently mapping the seafloor along a new area west of Perth, where depths exceed 5,000 meters in parts. Britain's chief of MI6, the Foreign Intelligence Service, is to step down from his position after five years on the job. 58-year-old John Sawyers made headlines in 2013 when he appeared before a parliamentary committee to complain that documents leaked by former U.S. intelligence operative Edward Snowden had put secret operations at risk and that they were being lapped up by al-Qaeda. MI6 collects intelligence and mounts covert operations overseas to defend national security and support British interests. Turkey has submitted a bill to boost the Kurdish peace process as it provides the militants with a legal framework, a step that may boost support for Prime Minister Tayyip Erdogan before an August presidential election. The bill was long sought by pro-Kurdish politicians, partly to remove the risk of those involved in the talks being prosecuted if the political climate in Turkey turned against the process in the future. And peace talks began with the jailed Kurdish militant leader Abdul Uya in 2012 in a bid to end a 30-year insurgency which has killed 40,000 people.